Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 85 to 88 of section 3 of the Purple Booklet. This question is about platelets, and there's quite a lot of information here, uh, so make sure you've got the exam in front of you when we're going through it, but I'll talk you through um, all of the answers. 85 says to prolong platelet lifespan in blood banks, which of the following is most readily achievable and useful? So A and B talk about changing the rate of transcription, which would be quite a difficult thing to do. So I'm not sure if that would be the most readily achievable um, option. But of course, it would definitely uh, have an impact on the lifespan of the platelets. If you read over it, you can see the impact that BCLX and BAC can have. And so inhibiting or increasing the rates of transcription of those would in fact change the lifespan of the platelets but not necessarily in the way we would want. If we read this, the main thing that it keeps coming back to is this thing called capsase 3, which is the apoptosis stimulator substance that's described. And each of the proteins that are mentioned modulate the activity of caspase 3, either directly, such as in BAC, or indirectly, such as in BCLX. We see that there's also a sentence that says, the drug QVD inhibits caspase 3. And so if caspase 3 is causing all the issues, inhibiting it would be the best way to um, prolong the lifespan of these platelets. It'd also be a really readily, readily achievable way because it's only adding, adding one drug. The other option we have um, is administering ABT737. But it says in the absence of BAC, um, that won't affect caspase 3. And so we'd want a high back level, which of course induces platelet death. So that wouldn't be very helpful either. So the main thing we'd want to do here is to administer QVD to prolong the lifespan of the blood banks. So then that means the answer for number 85 is going to be D. If we look at 86 then, it says, um, what are the half-life half of the platelets? It says that within 10 days, or on the 10th day, the platelets would be reduced to just less than 5% of their original volume. So the way I like to think of this is if on day zero, we start off with 100. After a half-life has passed, we end up with 50% of what we started with. After that time, we get 25%. After that time, 12.5%, and so on. Eventually, we do end up with a number that's less than 5. Um, so let's look at how many steps we have one, two, three, four, five steps to fit into 10 days. And that means that the half-life has to be um, two days in order for us to be able to get um, that many divisions in 10 days. If it was one day, we'd end up um, with half as much as we're looking at. Um, and of course, if it were three or four days, we wouldn't get down to um, less than 5% in 10 days. So the answer for this one has to be two days which is B. So if we look at 87 then it says, which of the following is most strongly suggested by figure 1B? So if we have a look at figure 1B, which I haven't copied out, we can see that there's a couple of different variables um, that move around all at once. I think the best ones to compare are the first and second. This is moving from left to right. Um, the first and the second one can tell you a little bit about the um, activity that back has. Of course, it's what um, binds to this, um, yeah, it binds to this cap, caspase 3 that we were talking about before. If we then compare those bars to the third and the fourth, we get an idea of what sort of um, impact BCLX can have. But comparing them all, all five allows us to get an idea of what effect BACs can have. And so while we can say that there is some modulation in half time, uh, in half-life, sorry, that occurs when you have backs. Um, we can't really say to what extent, mostly because we've got so many variables moving all at once. So we can't say if it has more or less of an effect. Um, but we can say that there is an observable effect, especially looking at the rightmost, the darkest two columns. So we can say there is an observable effect, but we can't go any further than that. So then that, that means the answer for 87 has to be D. 88 then says, in explaining the lifespan of a platelet, which of the following is most consistent with the information presented? So if we were to have a look at um, 
figure 1a and 1b. We know a little bit about how BCLX decreases over time. We also see how um, back can affect the half-life, and this is in figure 1b, how back can affect the half-life of the platelets. And this is particularly seen in columns 1 and 4, again moving from left to right. We can also um, get an infer from the information that's given that the amount of back would increase over time. And that's why um, as time goes on, you have a greater proportion of these platelets that have undergone apoptosis because of the action of back. And of course, um, back induces this platelet death um, and it affects this caspase 3 that everything seems to keep coming back to. We know that BCLX um, binds to back and inhibits its work, but if BCL decreases, as we see in figure 1a, we get an increase overall as time goes on in the amount of unbound back, which can then go on to affect the apoptosis stimulator substance caspase 3. So that means that the answer for number 88, from everything that we've been given, is going to be um, answer C. It's quite a lot of information to go through there, but that was questions 85 to 88 of section 3 of the purple booklet. I hope that helped.